What's good? Mike's in the building. Let me tell you my story on how I became a motorcyclist. So often we hear these magical words, bike life. Then again, you have the guy that wants to be the next MotoGP rider or your street crossing. Pretty common, right? Dragging me on the weekend or want to be like Mark Marquez, grabbing the hottest. We immediately escape in our mind, envisioning the young inner city kid out of Harlem, rocking the 12 o'clock wheelie, escaping from police officers, riding the sidewalks, trying their best to live the most positive or at least having the most positive outlook on the hardship that they live with on a daily. Then again, you have the guy that wants to be the street Rossi, the next big guy that you're talking about in the mountains, rocking the latest leader bike and just doing their thing, want to be the next Marc Marquez or the doctor. Who doesn't want to be the doctor, right? <laughs> this story is completely not that. Picture this, you're a small kid, your brain is sponging everything it sees, right? It all started in 1988. Fast forward 31 years to a post-World War III Neo-Tokyo that's been leveled and ransacked by gang violence. This is Akira, people. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me explain, let me explain. I know we got into Neo-Tokyo World War III, but here's the thing. In this post-World War III Neo-Tokyo steampunk style thing, it is riddled with motorcycle gangs from the capsules and the clowns. So violence runs straight in that entire world. It's, it's complete chaos. This is what I did with my time, guys. I watched these crazy imaginary anime and got extremely inspired. It's inspired my entire life from current day to when I was a kid to going to school and being very passionate about the arts. In this film, Akira, they had this amazing scene where the capsules had a giant battle against the clowns. And these guys are two different motorcycle gangs and it, it is something to be seen. When I'm out there on the road on my bike and I ride my Ducati and, and enjoy myself, I'm still that same little kid. I envision the world just as I envision Neo Tokyo when I watch the anime and, and, and the DVD. It's almost like seeing a, a version of New York City. Seeing the lights pass as you by, seeing the bike brake lights flashing on or, or the car ahead of you. And these battles were amazing. The writing was just something that's out of this world. This is a traditional animation that's done by 24 frames per second. I think their budget was a billion dollars for the time frame. And the animation itself, Akira, was adapted by Otomo. So watching Akira, watching this three to five minute scene of Akira, is very reminiscent of what kind of drew me into motorcycling. It was never MotoGP. It was never the dope boys who rode 12 o'clock wheelies down the street. I envisioned myself as Kaneda, the leader of the capsules, you know? Riding down New York or the streets of Manhattan, it's very reminiscent at night when you see that scene with Akira with the whole gang chasing down the clowns and for you to go down the middle of Times Square and heading downwards towards, you know, Seoul or something like that. It is almost the same thing. It's almost like we always say, we never really grow up. For me, it's always the same. I'm always living the same fantasy and it's amazing. They did such an amazing job putting this, the motorcycling scene so well together in an animated form. So when we're talking about animation, we're talking about frames by frames by frame by frame by frame. For you guys that know about animation, it was shot in ones. Huge deal. And the way they capture what being a motorcyclist or a gang motorcycle means, it flew over my head at that age, you know? It just, I really didn't get it. I customized that bike for myself. It's too wild, you couldn't handle Akira it. Akira is one of those body of work that will forever aspire people that are either into the arts, animation, or wanna go hand on hand with paper to produce something that's beautiful and amazing. And to a kid like myself that grew up watching it, that envisioned the night, seeing the motorcycle lights stream through the street. And the director, Odomo, he had to really, he had to either be a writer or someone that understood the aesthetics of writing on how 
it makes you feel in order to evoke that emotion visually on an animation. I don't see how you can ride something crazy like that, man. <laughs> I could. The bike he rode was like a red... <laughs> if you want it so bad, then steal one yourself. Motorcycle, of course, you know, Ducati Red, I'm rocking with that. So I guess you can see trails of what the anime is and what I've become over time and what I like. You could see certain styling, certain traits, you know? It's almost like an homage, you know what I mean? I'm speaking about it right now and it's giving me goosebumps and I still feel like, yeah, let's go out tonight and ride. As you can see, a lot of my, my rides are at night and I guess it's probably part of that, maybe subconsciously. I go out there at night. Not only this has inspired me to be on a motorcycle and it makes me, and it gives me that feel when I do ride, just uh, seeing Kaneda, the leader of the capsules, rocking that red jacket and has the capsule in the back for, the, for his gang, for his crew, it's like a ride or die. The camaraderie amongst them, being able to stand against the clowns and fight and ride through the city like nobody's business not even caring and mind you I, you know you know the thing is here's what i think that really caught me in regards to the story it's not that they rode motorcycles i think i really related to the story because they were they were kids i think the story portrays them as if they were 15 16 maybe 17 the oldest so I think there was a connection there, me as a child watching that and felt like, wow, this is what it's gonna be like when you're, you're a kid, you know what I mean? You're gonna ride amazing motorcycles that's red, you rock the red jacket with the capsule. It's just amazing. And it's done way more than just uh, pave a way for me to be on motorcycles and enjoy myself. Um, it's actually made me continue pursuing a career, you know, putting pencil to a paper, <laughs> or uh, doing the arts, even my wife does as well. And it's just impacted me in several ways. And again, I ride a lot at night through New York and it always brings me back to that same state of mind, that feel, you know. From that point, it was a matter of how do I get myself on these two wheel God machines that I was idolizing from an anime, right? To some of the guys I was out there in the street. It was just crazy you had to kind of do it kind of get involved and get go out there um there was a little bit of writing dirty going on in the very beginning but it was really just not for me i went the proper way by going to a course and learning and understanding the proper way of you know harnessing the power of the motorcycle now i'm kidding enjoying yourself in a safe manner but again like i said it still brings me back to the very beginning which is the scene in akira and how it just made my heart just right there out of my chest. <laughs> it's been a real adventure, especially coming from, you know, the inner city of Harlem and not having a lot and really being able to see yourself outside of yourself, seeing something that you really aspire to and you really want and it motivates you to kind of get up and go and actually get things done and not make excuses. So. Again, bike life has impacted a lot of avenues in my life. It might not be directly, more like indirect, but it pushed me, made me work harder for what I want and really focus. You know, I'm less of a complainer. I don't, you know, I want something, I rock hard and I get it. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, whichever button that you hit, all right? Subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you dig this. I'll be doing more storytelling. Your boy has merch now looking clean. Want to support me? Hit the link down below. They're available. Shipping 24 hours. <laughs> I'll holler at you later.